Hello and welcome, my name is Andrew Peel, and today I'm going to be demonstrating some new tools for Blender. And the tools that I'm going to be showing are built for interior designers. And everything that I'll be demonstrating today just scratches the surface of what these features are capable of. So here is the finished result of what we're going to be creating in this video. And to create this room, we're going to start out by drawing the walls and just coming up with the initial room layout. Then we're going to be using the drag and drop tools to add groups, objects, and materials into the scene. And while I'll do this, you'll see how the entire room layout process has been simplified and streamlined. Then I'm going to explain how we can add some more details like a custom countertop or how we can extrude profiles for the crown and the base molding as well as several other details like creating a custom ceiling, adding lights, and a bunch of other great stuff. So that's what we're going to be doing in this video, so let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so you'll notice that the default screen layout has been modified, and there's a few other of the default factory settings that have been changed for Blender, and there's simple things like left click and right click, but just know that some of the default factory settings have been modified to make this process work better. So we can go ahead and start by drawing walls. We can do that from the Add Object menu and just click Draw Wall, and we'll just accept the defaults, and that adds our first wall into our scene. We can also bring up that menu by typing Shift A on our keyboard and Draw Wall. Here we can change the rotation, so I'll add one to the right. And we'll go and do that again, add one to the left. Now if we want to, we can also just change the default wall length. So here we'll just type in a different value, add one there. And then maybe we'll change it back to 120 and add another one. And let's go ahead and add a couple more walls here. And okay, so now we have a pretty generic room layout here. And what we can do now is we can select each of these wall segments independently. And if we right click, we can access the properties. And so here we can adjust the wall length. And since we're using a constraint system, we can see that it automatically adjusts all of the other walls accordingly. And so we can change these values to what we want here. Apart from just sliding those values, we can obviously just enter in a value. So if we type 18 there, we can that be 18 feet. Obviously Blender allows for the imperial or the metric system if you'd rather enter your uh, dimensions in meters. Um, here we can go ahead and change this wall length and let's go ahead and just extend this one out a little bit further here. Okay, so let's say that that's what we're looking for there. Now let's go ahead and use our product library to add some products to the scene. So let's go ahead and switch over to our wall components and here we're in our entry doors and right now I'm just using the sample library, so there's only a few things to choose from, but it'll work just well. So we'll go ahead and add that to the center of that wall back there. And let's go ahead and add in a sliding glass door here on the left. And just like the walls, if we select these components, we can right-click and access the property. So here we can adjust the location of where these objects are on the walls. And so let's say that we want it right about there. It's looking pretty good. And now let's go ahead and add in an entry door to this wall here. We'll go and place that on the center. And we'll zoom in on it. And for this one, we can right click and we can even change the dimensions of these. Now, we obviously wouldn't want to do that with this type of door, but if we select this panel here, we'll go ahead and just delete out the door panel and the handle because I want to turn this into a kind of entryway into maybe the living room or something along those lines. So I can just kind of stretch that out until I get what I want and maybe change the Z dimension to match the entry door. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. But if we were going to do a rendering from like right here, so we would see that there's no back wall. And so what we can do is we can select this wall here and go and type in Shift A on our keyboard, Add Wall. Since we have this Add to Selected Wall checked, then we just say OK, and it automatically um, positions that wall so we can kind of extend it. And if we wanted to, we can you know continue this on and draw an entire house. But for right now, let's just focus on just the kitchen design. So let's go and add in a couple of windows here. So let's go to our Windows category. And let's go ahead and drag this triple window here. We'll go ahead and place this one right in the center of this wall. But let's go ahead and just kind of modify it. Now I'm going to use this as the window above the sink. And that might change a little bit. But for right now, let's just say that it's going to be placed right there. And let's go ahead and add in one more window. Let's go and just choose this last one and let's put it on this back wall here on the left hand side. And we have these item numbers here just so you can kind of select these objects a little bit easier. And they also help for 
placing objects next to each other. I'll demonstrate that here in a minute. Maybe I'll change the Z location down a little bit. Okay, so now we've got a pretty decent room layout here. The last object that I want to add into the scene for the initial room layout is going to be the floor. So what we'll do is we'll type Shift A on our keyboard, add plane to room, and say OK. So there we go. That's just added a simple plane into our room. And to add some materials, let's go ahead and switch over to our material library. And let's go to the texture paint category. And for the walls, I'll go ahead and use this gray texture paint, and you just drag it into the scene, and this allows for recursive assignment. So here we can just start clicking on any object that we want in the scene. It automatically unwraps it, it automatically applies the texture to it, and these are all cycles materials, so that works out pretty well. And I'll just hit escape to cancel that command. And let's go ahead and switch over to our hardwood floors. And I'll just drag this first one in the list here and assign it to the floor. Okay, so that's looking about what I want, but I want these boards to be running the other direction. So if I open up my toolbar here, I can see that I have all of the available materials that are already added to the scene. And so here, if I click on that arrow cherry hardwood, this is reading just basically the standard properties that you would want to modify. Now, instead of going into the nodes and finding what nodes we need to modify, we can just adjust any of the common values that we want right from here. So we can just change this texture rotation to be 90. And that's looking pretty good. And we can also just adjust the scale if we want those boards to be a little bit more narrow. OK, so that's looking about what I want there. Go ahead and get rid of that panel. And let's go ahead and uh, just go into rendered mode to see where we're at so far. All right, looking pretty good. The only thing that I want to do is add in a sun lamp. And we'll worry about the lighting a little bit later on, but right now we can just add that in just to kind of get a generic look at what we're looking at here. Okay, so this is looking pretty good so far. All right, so let's go ahead and just uh, switch back to material mode here. And let's go ahead and continue drawing some more products here. So let's go back to the product library, and now let's go to the frameless cabinets library. And let's go ahead and start off by drawing some corner cabinets. Let's go and select this wall and zoom in on it here. Okay. I'll go and drag this one to the scene, assign it to this wall, and add it on the left there. And then let's go ahead and add in the upper corner product as well. Go ahead and add this to the left as well. Okay. And next, let's go ahead and add in the tall cabinet, a tall refrigerator cabinet here. And this time we'll place it on the right, but maybe we'll offset it from the right just one inch there. Okay. So now you can see it's offset one inch there on the right. So that's looking pretty good. Next, let's go switch back to the base cabinets category, and let's go ahead and add in this two-door, two-drawer base cabinet. And we can add it either to this product or to this product. And when we do that, we'll select this one here. We can say fill right, and it knows how to detect you know, all of the other objects on this wall. So they're just filled in that gap there. So that works pretty well. Next, let's go ahead and switch to the upper cabinets category. And let's go ahead and add in a two-door upper. We'll just go ahead and add one to the left here, but let's change the width to be 30. So you can also just adjust the product sizes, you know, before you've actually added them into the scene. And to finish this up, let's go ahead and just add in this one door upper here and fill left. Okay, so that added that. Um, next, I want to go ahead and just add in a microwave underneath this two door upper. So here I can adjust the Z dimension to be something along those lines. And let me switch over to my appliance, and let's go ahead and add in a microwave. So we'll just go ahead and use this Viking 30-inch microwave, and we'll add it to the left. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. And since we're already in our appliances, let's go ahead and um, actually switch over to our dishwashers, and let's go ahead and put this Viking Professional dishwasher here on the left of this corner cabinet. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. Let's go and switch back to the frameless cabinets, and let's go ahead and add in a sink cabinet next to the dishwasher. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Next, we can maybe go ahead and add in another corner cabinet if we want to do a return here. So we'll just go ahead and add this corner cabinet to the left side. Okay. And now we can just continue drawing off of that corner cabinet. So we'll switch back to the base cabinets. Here we'll go ahead and add in this two-door base product with this cooktop already added to it on the left of this corner cabinet. And 
then we'll go ahead and just place in maybe another two door, two drawer base cabinet on the left of this. Okay, so now we got some products added there. It's looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and add in a couple more upper products here. So let's go ahead and switch back to our upper cabinets category. And this two door upper, we can just say, just go ahead and add it to the right here. Now you can see it's kind of overlapping that other cabinet, but that's not a big problem. All we have to do, and let's go ahead and just maybe change the X location to maybe three inches off that window. And what we can do is we can use the stretch command. And so if we hit shift right arrow, now that will just fix any overlap. So you can see that we can stretch, or if I just use my left and my right arrow key here, you can just bump products um, around on the wall so it knows how to detect you know, the, co the collisions between other products. So that works pretty well. Now let's go ahead and just add in a two-door upper on this wall. And let's go ahead and just maybe change its X dimension a little bit. We'll go ahead and bump it to the right and then change its X location, yeah, three inches. So that's looking about right there. Let's go ahead and just um, add in a oven now to this room and we'll go ahead and put it on this wall over here. So let's go ahead and go to our tall products. We have this tall product with a built-in oven. So we'll add that to the left. Okay. And then we will go ahead and switch back to our base cabinets and then just finish this off by adding a few more products. So here we'll go ahead and select this one. Maybe we'll add two of these in here to the right. And then maybe we'll go ahead and add a three drawer stack on the right hand side of this product. And let's just go ahead and fin finish this off by adding some more upper products. Here we'll just add this two door upper and we'll place it next to this cabinet here on the right. And maybe we'll just go ahead and add three of these. Okay, so that's looking pretty good here. Now we can always adjust the room as we're going through the design process like this wall here. I don't want this to be that long. So we'll go and change the length of this wall. We can see that all the products automatically know how to adjust here if we selected this wall we wanted to change the length we can see that all of the other components you know will automatically adjust so it makes it very easy to make modifications to this room and we can even just change the rotation too so this might not be something that we necessarily want to do for this room but you can see how everything just follows suit the constraint system is very powerful so that is working pretty good um, next let's go and show how some of these products can actually have more functionality built into them so here we have just this raw material showing for these upper products and then the back of these base cabinets here and so if we go to the item number we can right click and apart from all of the main properties we also have some additional custom properties that were added to this so we can turn on a left finished end and a right finished end we can also adjust the door swing if we wanted to but for right now let's just go ahead and get rid of all of that exposed material for these products and this is important for interior designers because as they are you know designing the room these types of you know modifications that are made to the room can adjust you know the cost of these products how the products are manufactured and that's one of the big benefits to um, using these smart objects because they can store a lot more information than just standard objects you know anything from the price to the you know manufacturing information that the cabinet manufacturers would need to actually build these products so it's quite powerful and so let's go ahead and change this to left finished end we can see that these base products also have a finished back prompt here that we can choose and that will just add in this back panel here to kind of you know get rid of all of that raw exposed material so we'll go ahead and do the same thing for these products here we'll add that finished back select this corner product and this one has a finished left and a right just in case but we'll just need the left one for now okay so that is looking pretty good and you can see that just in a really small amount of time we're able to do this whole room layout so let's go ahead and um, kind of frame our shots so let's go and add a camera now so we'll go ahead and shift a add a camera and let's go and zoom in a little bit on that and if we right click we can access the camera properties so these are all just the standard common things that you would you know need to access about the camera so what i'm going to do is i'm going to lock the camera to the view and that will just make it to where as I orbit around the scene now, we can see that my camera is just following um, along. So we can kind of just frame our shot a little bit. So let's just go and say that maybe this is what we're looking for. And all of these item numbers, you'll notice that they'll disappear. They don't actually render. They're just used to be able to you know, add these objects to the scene quickly. So let's go ahead and switch over to rendered mode here and see where we're at.
So hopefully you can see how helpful these tools can be. And there's a lot more that I'd like to show, like using the extrusion library to create all of the crown and the base molding for the room. And you can also use Blender's modeling tools to create a custom countertop. And you really only have to use the extrude and bevel tools to get a good result. And we could also add more parametric room components like the ceiling, lights, or other types of details into the room. And like I said before, this just scratches the surface of the features that I've been working on. And the tools were designed for interior designers, but they can easily be extended to design architectural exteriors or even an automated way of doing level design for video games. So there's a lot more that I'd like to show, and I'd be happy to make these tools available to the Blender community, but I just wasn't sure if there would be enough interest. So if anybody is interested, please let me know. And I'd like to thank everyone for watching, and be on the lookout for more updates on this project.